we're going to look at a classic game called Lights Out. What you see here is a clone of that game called The Lights for Mac. When the app is launched, you are presented with a 5x5 array of lights, some are on and some are off. There's only one thing you can do, is to press each of the squares. If I press the middle square, its light will toggle, and the square above will have its light toggle as well, the one below, the one on the right, and the one on the left. So let me just do that. Now if I click again, I go back to what I had before. What happens if you press something that is on the border, say this one here? What happens is, you will toggle the light of the square, as well as the one above, the one on the right, and the one below. And if you press the top left square, the squares that are affected are the ones that are marked green. The goal of the game is to turn off all the lights. For this particular configuration, I'm going to press the squares that are marked green. So starting from the top left, moving towards the right and down. And voila! I make it seem so easy because I already worked out the solution beforehand. Normally you have to try a long time before you can clear all the lights. But I'm going to show you how to solve the puzzle using linear algebra. And to do that, I'm going to illustrate on a smaller version of the puzzle, a 3x3 version. What we are going to do is, we are going to model this mathematically. And to do that, let me just uh, number these squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. One thing to observe is, if you press a square an odd number of times, it's the same as pressing it once, and if you press it an even number of times, basically it's the same as not having pressed it at all. What we're going to do is, we're only going to keep track of whether or not a square is pressed an odd or even number of times, and we'll use 1 to represent odd and 0 to represent even. And for each square, we're going to mark down what happened, which squares are affected when you press on that square. And we're going to represent it with a 9x9 nine nine matrix. So each column corresponds to each square, and each row corresponds to the square that is affected. So if you press on square number 1, the squares that are affected are 1, 2, and 4. And we'll put 1 on those rows, and 0 everywhere else. If you press square 2, the squares that are affected are 1, 2, 3, and 5. And so on, we'll complete the matrix. So that's our matrix. Again, each column corresponds to each square that is pressed. And each row in the column corresponds to the squares that are affected by a press. Now, if we represent the configuration of light as a column vector, we have 1's in rows 1, 2, 4, and 8, and zeros everywhere else. And the goal now is to find a subset of columns that are to the right-hand side, modulo 2, that is 1 plus 1 is 0. Right, because if I pick column 1, say, well, I'm affecting square 1, 2, and 4, basically that will get rid of the lights 1 in squares 1, 2, and 4. If I have a subset of the columns, when you add them together, that is exactly the right hand side, then I have toggled off all the lights. And so we are looking for a solution to this matrix equation. This is a rather large system, 9 equations and 9 unknowns, and we could save some time by using uh, Gaussian elimination. Remember that the operations in Gaussian elimination are, are the following. You can replace a row by a constant multiple of the row where the constant is non-zero. You can replace a row by adding a constant multiple of another row to it. Or you can swap two rows. The idea behind Gaussian elimination is you want to use these operations, which preserve the set of solutions, to transform the system into a system where we can easily read off the solutions. 
And there's a very special form that will allow us to do that, and it's called the reduced row echelon form. So let me just review what the reduced row echelon form looks like. So a matrix is in reduced row echelon form if it looks like this. So each row has a leading one. Everything on the left of the one is zero. And the leading one of a particular row has to be on the right of the leading one of the row above. Anything that is above a leading one and below a leading one is, has to be zero. So this has to be zero, and all these up here have to be zero. There can be other stuff, and zero, and everything here, they're all zeros. Now, if you look at the augmented matrix where the right hand side is the rightmost column, say in this case, say it's 3, 1, 2, 5, you can read off the solution very quickly. So what you do is you set this variable, the variable corresponds to this leading one to 3, the variable corresponds to this leading one to 1, the variable corresponds to this leading one to 2, and the variable corresponds to this leading one to 5, and set everything else to 0. And that will be a solution to the original system. Here we can do the same thing. But we have to keep in mind that the only numbers that we have are 0 and 1. And the peculiar thing is that 1 plus 1 is 0. Okay, so we'll form our augmented matrix and apply Gaussian emulation to obtain the reduced row echelon form with this special property that 1 plus 1 is 0. There is a special name for such a number system where you have only 0 and 1 and you can multiply and add as well. And that's called GF2, a finite field of two elements. But uh, you don't have to worry about that. All you need to remember here is that we are using Gaussian elimination. Whenever you see 1 plus 1, you can write it as 0. So this is my augmented matrix. And now if we look at the leading one in the first row, well, there are some things underneath it that is non-zero. So I'm going to add row 1 to row 2 as well as row 4. And I'm going to do this in place. Row 1 added to row 2 is 1, 0, 0. I'm going to swap rows 2 and row 3 so that the leading one of row 2 is left of the leading one of row 3, and so on until we get down to a reduced row echelon form. So if we haven't made any mistake, this solution will tell us that if we press on the second square, the third square, and the fifth square, we will have solved the puzzle. So let's see if that's the case. Second third, and fifth. Indeed, that solves the puzzle. So here is a method that you can use to solve lights out. Obviously, we have done a lot of calculations here. I mean, performing row reduction on a 9x9 matrix is no easy feat. If you're looking at the original version, it's 5x5, five five, so you have a 25x25 25 25 matrix. Now, whether you want to do this by hand or not is up to you. But there are all kinds of software packages out there that allow you to do this kind of computations uh, using the computer. So have fun and enjoy.